Welcome to the Never Dull Moment. Uh, we have a very different episode this week. Uh, a manufacturer had reached out to us and they wanted to kind of quote unquote take the Pepsi challenge. They have produced uh, their set of knives. They are willing to go up against what are some of the best of the best and see where they rate. So this afternoon I'm going to present a company called King Joy. Yes, the founder of this is actually from Japan for those of you who are wondering. So Sato Ryu is out of um, Japan. He is a big fa fan of Sakai Steel. And so what he has done is he's, he's created several sets of knives on his website and they reached out to us. We, we told them a lot of times we don't do the reviews of different knife brands that aren't artisan anymore. I would like to first point out, um, you know, so I've not been paid for this review. So just so you know, as far as compensation, the knives were sent for free. There's no other compensation. What I say is out of my face. I have not opened the boxes. I have prepared a myriad of tests. We do not alter the test. We are not, so whatever happens, it's whatever they sent in the box and whatever we're showing you. We do have, by comparison, some very expensive knives to compare them to. In a way, you can almost say it's not fair because the total of this knife set is $399 and the variety of knives, just one of the knives alone is a $1,500 knife. The other one's like a $1,300 knife. So. We have a myriad of knives to compare it to, but I wanted to show you by comparison, it's it versus the standard of other things. So uh, in case you can't hear in the background, my baby girl, Josie, Golden Retriever is visiting. She likes to come onto the set every once in a while and see what mom and dad are doing. She also wants attention when we're busy doing something. Yeah, like apparently she wants some attention. She's like a she toddler. See, what's, what's those new knives you got on the show, dad? Are you a toddler? Okay, so the first thing we need to do before we get into this is open the knives. But you're not so we have, um, and it's funny because because they're selling in America, they did this in inches, and I'm used to millimeters now. I've totally gotten used to this. So this is an 11 inch knife. Um, so let's see what we have going on here. I know it's a solid wood handle, VG10 steel. Now, for those of you who come on the show regularly and who know Japanese knives, VG10 is a Takafu knife. It's a Takafu steel. Steel. I mean, so Takafu steel is a steel manufacturer out of Japan. And so they went ahead and did a VG10 cladded with Damascus knife. They did wrap it in saran to protect it from getting scratches on the handle. I appreciate the extra touch. Um difficult to get up well that's just me taking my time i actually just trying to make sure i don't get a lot of fingerprints on the knife if that makes sense mm -hmm. um so let's talk up real quick about vg10 if you're new to the show or watching for the very first time vg10 is a is a r amazing steel it is stainless it is high carbon and it is high vanadium um so it gives it like a, a hardness that is up there the um so this knife can get extremely sharp. This, so they sharp, they have a, a, what's called a Rockwell hardness. So if you're not used to that, the hardness helps us to determine how sharp we can get it. The harder the knife, the sharper you can get it, but at the same time, the more brittle the edge can be. And every manufacturer has to figure out, just looking at the box, nice box. Every manufacturer has to figure out what they want to do. Your average Japanese knife is 61 and up. This is right at 61. So they are playing in the same playground as all the other knife manufacturers. So this 11 inch knife, I'm gonna compare it in just a second to some Japanese links so we can get the millimeter down. Um, so let's go ahead and grab this 240 millimeter Fugubiki. So I'd say this knife is right at 240 millimeter. Hold on, Ben. Sorry. It's okay. So for those of you who are into the metric system, I would say that this 11 inch knife is right there at the 240 millimeter length. Okay. And again, if you are um, new to the knife world, for those of you who are wondering, why do I need this particular knife? This particular knife is a single bevel. 
um, fish slicing knife. What I'm looking for that I don't quite see, and I'm going to need to get a business card or a, I'm looking for the aura, which would be the concave. I think the, the back of this knife would be flat. Are you seeing any concave where you are, honey? No, it's just the shine is actually a little bit difficult too. So what I want to do by comparison is I think everyone else can see um, we do have on the traditional Japanese single bevel knife that there is a slightly curved concave back. But to not discredit it, I need to, um, to actually take a business card or I can use their card and see if I, if I have it flat or if it's concave. Hard to say if the business card itself was flat too. I think the business card itself isn't flat. I'm gonna lay it down on here. So again, I do think this is a, a flat back, no Uroshi on the back, but single bevel. And let me explain to you, for this is a fish slicing knife, okay? And uh, we will go ahead, let me close this box and give it a comparison to some other knives. The first knife I'm gonna compare it to is another Yanagaba. This particular Yanagaba is quite a bit larger at 300 millimeter. You will notice it has a thicker spine. It retails at $1,500. It is a high carbon steel knife, which means it can rust and get a patina. The steel that is being used for this VG10 knife is not going to give you that problem. It is going to not have corrosion and remember you're going to be dealing with a wet fish the entire time. The Japanese chef doing sushi would have to wipe down the Unagaba that he's using. You will not have that problem with the VG10. You, it's going to be a little bit more like less fuss you might say. Okay, being a little bit thinner, it's going to help slice through the food. Um, you can see that it's, it mimics the traditional handle. Uh, I do want to point out that it is the traditional octangle, octagonal, octagonal handle and that the wood that is used is not faux wood or veneer. It is actually solid, regular wood. They do have the nickel ringers on there. And the one thing that they did that's a little bit different, it's a full tang. So the metal of this knife actually extends all the way through to the bottom. Where on the traditional Japanese knife, it generally comes about halfway. I can't tell if that is discoloration from the, the coloration of oh. the, the horn that is being used, or if that's the end of the tang of the metal coming through. So it could be the color of the horn that's being used on the end of this or the metal. But what that means is, is as far as the weight, like it goes completely through instead of stopping halfway. The fit and finish on it is quite flush. Mm -hmm. yep. And let's go ahead and again look at the comparison to other Japanese knives. The fit and finish being quite flush, which is what you would want to see. Now I'm going to go ahead and compare this as well to a what's called Hanyaki Kritsuke. This knife has never been used. It's extremely high value. Um, it will not be used on this show ever. Um, again, the fit and finish. You can see that the horn on this, they're both very similar. So as far as like following the traditions of Japan, the King Joy company wanted to do that. In a moment, we will display how you use this knife. But this single bevel knife, having the VG10, if you're using it for the fish, you should keep a sharp edge for a very long time. VG10 hold, holds it still. Let's try that again. VG10 holds its edge extremely well. You should be slicing fish. So because what you're doing is a very tender, delicate thing, if you use a good cutting board, um, 
edge grain, in grain, wood, some of the synthetic um, rubber that's coming out of Japan. It's really going to hold an edge for a long time. Sharpening it is um, not going to be something that's necessary for quite a while. Again, you're not going to have to worry about rust. What I will let you know is later on when you go to sharpen it, you can either use a service or you can watch our videos. I'll put a link above and you can see how to sharpen this knife because it is unique to sharpen the knife on a single bevel knife. Um, I noticed that on the website it said it has a lifetime guarantee and has a 90 day money back guarantee. Um, again, the normal uh, upkeep on this knife would be that you can use it. You can walk away, enjoy dinner, wipe it down when you're done. I personally, you know, think try to take the time and wipe everything down. It does stain less does not mean stain free. It just means it stains less. Again, it's not something you need to worry about, but take the time to have pride in your ownership. Um, and I want to compare it to one more knife really fast. The Fugu Biki is a much more delicate knife that is meant to cut blowfish. So you don't want a lot of weight. So you can see it's thinner than the other Yanagabas used for big fish but bigger than the Fugu Biki. The handle is a little bit less beefy than the other two more expensive knives, but a little bit beefier than the Fugu Biki. They are about the same length. So again, it's not gonna to be too heavy on your hand. Um, again, if a really nice knife like this with a sharp edge is so that way when you're cutting fish, you don't tether the edges. Um, when you're looking at your sushi, you really, you really want your presentation to be nice. We eat with our eyes, so having a nice, clean edge is important. I will do a paper test on it in just a moment. But I did just want to be able to give you, you know, a look at the size. Before we dirty up the cutting board, I am going to move on to the other items that were um, sent to us on the show. So what they did was they sent a set of knives because this set is available for purchase on the website. So in this set will be some knives that you would use not for the fish, but for the other things that you'd be doing in the kitchen. So this set of knives, we have what is called a Nikiri. Now all three of these knives, let me go ahead and get them out, are going to be used the same for other utilitarian things other than fish, but they are made of the same steel. And let me get this closed so that way I can um, display these properly. So this is mono steel, meaning it is one type of steel. The other knife, you know, what was going on was it was cladded. And what that means is on the original VG10 Yanagaba knife, the fish slicing knife, you had a certain steel and it was wrapped with um, another steel around the outside of it. Okay, so the actual edge of this knife is going to be VG10. VG10 is inside. Think of an ice cream sandwich. The vanilla is the cutting edge. The outside is the cookie. And so the, um, the steel on the outside, the Damascus, is nice for looks. It does not contribute anything to performance. It is something that people tend to love to see. It will help to protect the brittleness of the VG10 blade. We only really need the blade of it to be VG10. With that being said, these knives are going to be mono steel. Mono steel meaning the entire blade is made of one steel. Again, a full tang knife, all three of these. This particular steel is the Asian version, version of German steel. We are used to, okay, so this, this particular steel has a name, and I'm see if I can make sure I get this right. So it is CR5MOV15. Now, to those of us who know knife stuff, it seems like we've heard that before. So CR5 sounds a lot like 15CR. And instead of MOV15, we have 50. So basically I'm saying that there's another steel that's German that we are used to seeing. And the German steel is used in Victor Knox and it's used in some of the Wusthof and stuff like that. What's nice about the German steel or this Japanese version of that, um, it's going to have more flex. For those of you who are used to more Western knives, you're going to see that the steel has a little more flex. Now, if you've ever taken a big piece, like a big vegetable, say like um, um, butternut squash, and you get your knife stuck in there. Not that your knife's not sharp, but it's a big vegetable. If the 
knife kind of gets stuck. <laughs> this, these can bend a little bit to kind of get it out, but if you had a really hard knife, you would break your knife. Um, the goal is keep your knife sharp so you don't really have that problem and to use the proper knife for what's going on and which is what we're going to show you. So we have a Nikiri. This is the vegetable knife. I want to hold it up in comparison to a traditional Japanese Nikiri. So you will see this is the Japanese version of a Chinese cleaver. It is definitely shorter in its profile. You'll see on both a slightly rounded edge at the front. They are not supposed to be 90. The back is more 90. So it is in keeping with the tradition of Japan. Um, so this is going to be used as your vegetable knife. It has a little bit more size. It has a more weight. And so when you're cutting, it has a little bit more energy and mass to help push through the vegetable. Now, what's interesting about this knife and I think my wife, who has the microphone on, can confirm with me. This knife can be confusing on us. Is it a chef knife? Is it a santoku? Is it a suju, um, a suju hiki? So it is said to be a meat slicing knife in their description. I want to show you what a meat slicing knife looks like. Yeah, I was like, it's not long enough. Meat slicing knives are typically not too tall. And they are made for slicing meat. I would say this is in keeping a little bit more in the chef knife family. Yeah. A shorter chef knife. Chef knives are used for slicing meat, but they're also used for every other purpose that there is. Um, so again, you would be able to use this for vegetables, for doing things in your hand, um, meat slicing as well. A non-knife people's knife. Yeah, it's a non-knife people's <laughs> knife. What's kind of nice about this knife is it's not too long. So grandma, the children can learn on this. But yes, if you have like turkey at Thanksgiving, this is typically what you're going to go to. And then we have the knife that I think for most of you would be kind of confused by. It is a utility knife. And I have another utility knife to compare it to. So this particular utility knife... Okay, I'm going to get um, one by a company called Shun, who is made out of EG10. I want to show you the length comparison. This utility knife by Shun is a little bit longer, but... So much taller. Yeah. Uh, Height-wise, I don't know. I mean, the Shun one is just a little it, bit taller, and taller. that does vary. It is taller. Um, you will notice that the right where the handle connects, it is extremely similar. So that style is a similar style. But I do want to take a moment to show you that in comparison to a paring knife. So a paring knife would be shorter. So their utility knife is longer than a paring knife, shorter than some of the utilities. And so you might ask yourself, how do you use those? A paring knife is typically going to be used for something when you're when you're working with something in your hand so if you were coring a strawberry if you were peeling a potato then you would go to your paring knife i think this is a nice in between that i probably could if i had the potato do that i could probably core the strawberry so i could kind of use it in the pairing family at the same time um, i actually use this utility knife by shun and in a um cutting silver skin like let's say you had a piece of meat um, some of the different um, pork shoulders and things that you need to kind of move or say a pork tenderloin you know getting underneath you might think that's what the meat slicing knife is for those can be a little bit big so just getting into like delicate places slicing things off like that um, even cutting around the pork like on a, on a pork chop um, do please be careful with your knives around bone and frozen food. It is not a place to use. Take your time. Be a knife person. Take care of the knives that you get. If you do invest in a nice knife set, they will last you a long time if, as long as you take care of them. So with that being said, we're going to use these knives, but let's talk a little bit more about the steel comparison. So this... Um, 5CR MOV 15. I could have got them out of order, but I knew <laughs> I've said all these things so many times. The, um, the one of the things that you need to know is they really are resistant against corrosion. You know, and a kitchen can be a very wet place. 
they do they are softer so when you think of german knives think of softer this is the asian version of german steel you can get an edge but it loses its edge quicker the vg10 will hold its edge for a long time if you watch our show a link above on our entire sharpening supply um, then what you're going to be able to do is be able to sharpen your knives again you can um, if you have one of those knife sharpeners you want it through you can do that a sharpening service I definitely recommend but I also recommend getting a whetstone and doing it um, so corrosion is not going to be a problem you can get the knife sharp it will lose its edge more rapidly than say something as harder as the VG10 it is not wrong for you to use your Yanagaba, your fish slicing knife in other ways. If you want to have fun with it as a meat slicing knife, all knives can be used for all tasks. Um, but again, this is a great set to get into for the 400 because most of your money, uh, 240 millimeter VG10 solid wood full tang knife, Damascus cladded, of the 399 that you're spending, I'd say most of it is on this particular knife. Um, the, that knife does hold its value. All of the knives I showed you from um, 480 to 1500 to 2000, they're over here. You could get a similar VG10 for this for 225 to 300. So again, a lot of the stuff is being done. The, uh, really, the investment is here. And this is going to give you the knife that's going to give you wear and tear. It's not so brittle that it'll break. And it is something that you can sharpen and get an edge on regularly. The reason they do not use this knife on everyday carry knife, this particular steel on everyday carry, even though it's corrosion resistant outside, um, it really doesn't hold its edge long enough. You're out there, you're cutting very rustic kind of things, wood, campfire, stuff like that. So in the delicate world of kitchen knives, if you're using knives properly where you're not doing frozen food or bone, these can hold its edge greatly. So what we're going to do real quick is go ahead and move the knives. And then we're going to show you how to use them. Okay, so I'm going to move the cutting board towards me just a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to first get into, let's say, the paring knife. If I wanted to do something a little bit more delicate, if I needed to core... Let's say I wanted to hollow out this pepper because I want to do some type of stuffed peppers. Then this might be where I'm going to be doing that. And then you, this is when you could take your cream cheese, say maybe some scallions, some other hotter peppers, seasoning, kind of mix it up, stuff it all in there and get ready to bake, which would be really kind of nice. Um, again, if you wanted to do, if you like have smaller hands and you wanted to do something where you wanted to julienne, you see I'm able to get some nice slices. I didn't even test to see how the knife did, but I can tell you already from doing it that we were able to get a pretty sharp edge right off the bat. So, my wife would agree that we typically don't do a paper test on a knife that's already been used. Nope. But uh, we'll weird. do it anyway. So, okay. so we had a, a good cut. It sounded decent. It yep. sounded great. I mean, it sounded smooth. We didn't hear any spots on the knife. Again, the nice thing is the knife itself is wet, and I'm not going to worry about corrosion as I sit it to the side. We're going to use the uh, vegetable knife. We're going to do a pepper in case you've never seen how to do a pepper. Just slice off the top, slice off the bottom. I would definitely reserve. Then slice into, lay the knife flat, roll the pepper so that way it pulls away, and then just lay the pepper down so that way you can stay flush with the membrane. The membrane itself is bitter. So it's nice to get you if you want to be picky and if things are you know need to be economical definitely don't you know get rid of that little bit that you might have missed now if you'll remember again we haven't tested the sharpness but if you remember these peppers have a skin on the back so i definitely know a dull knife tends to bounce so let's see
So it's got the length of the blade that I need to handle the work, the flatness of the edge making uh, contact with the cutting board allows me to cut through each piece is loose. We had no problem. Again, don't normally test the blade after it's been used. But now we have a precedent with this. <laughs> and we had no problem. I am curious. The old fold don't crease. And we had no problem cutting that, which can be very difficult if you don't know what happens. If you fold and do not crease, a dull knife can bounce. So let's take the knife that hasn't been used. The dull knife could easily bounce or bite. If it bites, it's a sharp knife. So we've just seen that this is a sharp knife. So let's use it on the show. And by the way, like these are things I like to eat. So uh, I'll have some peppers and onions later. Okay. So, um, you can see that that was no problem. That was an easy bite. Let's go ahead and make sure that we don't eat paper later. You would say, Greg, could you use the vegetable knife for this? Sure, but then I wouldn't be able to show you what the chef knife looks like. It seemed to cut through it pretty easily too. I would say that I had no problems whatsoever. But this is, the, this is the part of the onion cutting that my wife absolutely can't stand because she gets I, afraid every time that when I'm dicing an onion oh, that I'm going to cut myself. Because he does this like slasher move in here that well, so we're gonna if you cut, haven't seen it, you'll see it in a second. Yeah, so we're going to cut the onion You're two ways. Apron, we're going to do a dice and we're going to do a cut that we would do for caramelized hey, onions. slicer boy. You're not wearing your apron. It's okay. Dear Lord. Okay. Okay, so for those of you watching, my fingers are going to be at the very top of the onion. I'm moving my body away from the cutting board. I'm getting the knife parallel. I want the knife to cut through the onion, not all the way through, so I can slice. So I'm going to and there we go. We've made our wife not happy. Jo Josie Marie. <laughs> Sorry guys, the dog was tangled. There was a snafu in the video. And again, you see the knife was the knife was long enough to handle the task. Um, and as far as a rocking motion, anything that we've missed on the dice, we can get. Now, as far as like caramelized onions, I love caramelized onions, peppers and onions. So what I would do is I would keep the, uh, the onion in this way. I want to slice in little like half moons. So I've got my claw so my knife can sit on my fingers. When you get about halfway, roll your onion so it's down so you can do it again and we're able to get nice thin slices and we can do some caramelized onions okay with that being said let's move this entire cutting board out of the way I'm not sure where you're putting that sir I don't know where I'm putting it either that's the beauty of our show is the Move the knives in and then maybe the dining room table and closer to the middle. So that means microphone off for one second. Because there's Brussels sprouts on the stove. <laughs> yeah, because I cooked some Brussels sprouts. <laughs> the dog's like, where are you going with that, Dad? You can't have those. You can't have those, babe. No. So, find your fish safe. And there he is. So there we go. So for those of you who don't know, this cutting board is Hasagawa. 
I'm not promoting it for sale in the sense that I don't make anything if you buy one. But the Hasagawa is a, it's in the family of synthetic rubber cutting boards. It is something that I can throw in the dishwasher, but it's highly sanitary and we're going to be taking a fish. I am not sure the quality of this particular fish. This is a wild sockeye salmon. Wild. I'm going to say this as a disclaimer. If you guys don't know when you're doing salmon at your house, if it is not farmed salmon, you cannot eat it raw. Salmon can, all fish wild contain parasites. All fish have to be cooked. Period. Salmon is cooked. My wife likes barbecue salmon. It's the only way she eats it. If you're doing a raw preparation, it has to be farmed. If you are an actual sushi chef, then you would know. So we're going to, I'm going to, my, my dog is requesting my wife's She's going to have an accident if I don't go. So my wife is going to step away while I keep talking to you on the main camera. And again, for those of you who are new to the knife world, welcome to Never a Dull Moment. I am Greg Blythe. I'm hoping that this is still not a dull moment as we continue to do this review. So you can see that this fish is skin on. Okay. Now, before I do anything with the fish, let's test the sharpness of the knife. This is the VG10 knife. I mean, that's great. This is called a push cut, where I just pushed. Extremely nice. So if you're new to cutting salmon, we are going to want to make a handle. So what we're going to be trying to do right now is we're going to be trying to remove the fish from the flesh. Okay. So we are going to take back here and make a handle. And I'll say this, the knife itself was so sharp that we almost cut through our handle. So I said we're making a handle and then I said the knife is so sharp I almost cut through my handle. I might have oh, yeah, cut a little bit too much for my hand. Yep. Okay. It's not a thick piece either. Yep. So let's just go ahead and make another handle. <laughs> okay. So then we're going to slide the knife underneath we're going to grab our handle I haven't done this in a while I didn't do too bad of a job. Don't blame the knife, blame the chef. I'll tell you this, the knife itself is pretty sharp. Don't blame the knife, blame the chef. And I know the owners of the show are watching and they're like, what are you doing? I mean, the owners of the, the knife, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, what are you doing, Greg? I am going to enjoy some barbecue salmon, though. Our dog is like, what's up, Dad?
it's so funny I've, I'm used to being able to do this on the first try so but it, what I really like is right now I'm really having good time slicing the flesh it's getting me get wafer thin obviously I'm not a sushi chef by the way okay my wife will open the trash for me so I can discard this and let's do this the way a sushi chef would okay so you have the the flatter side that's a little bit more tapered what they would want to do is you want the knife to do one continuous drag you do not want to do a sawing motion so you really do want to just do a light nice slice and you see with that one slice we have two fish okay and then when they when they're going to make their sushi they would go ahead and get rid of the first piece they would use that for say a roll of some kind and then you really want to make sure that when you're slicing it's just one continuous pull and again, I might, for this particular fish, need a, a bigger piece. So I'm able to get the piece that I would need. Waste nothing. Make sure you make those rolls. So you're able to... Except not with this fish. Yeah, I'm not sure if sockeye salmon yeah, is being used wild. for a... Yeah, it's also wild. You can't make sushi out of it. And again, this is not like from my fresh fish market, by the way. So I'm not sure of its age. I do apologize. But again, I just wanted to show you that they are going to lay the knife in and then a dragging motion. But you can see that the edge is cut extremely clean. That's the point of the knife. Okay. It's very silent. Cuts meat really well. And that's its purpose. But if for some reason touching this if you wanted to have fun with your knife and you wanted to you know use it in a way that I used earlier it's not that you couldn't, it's not that you couldn't. as far as like the rocking motion I'm not sure that you could because there's no finger clearance but as far as like a chopping motion It's your knife. Have fun with it. Okay. Well, for King Joy, I will say that I'm Greg Blythe. That was definitely not a dull moment. I appreciate you checking in with us. If you want to check out their website, there'll be a link in the description. I know that this combo set normally is $3.99. I do not believe that there's a sale of any kind unless it's something that they're promoting. I'm not promoting a sale of anything. That is the price. Really good Japanese steel. The Asian version of German steel commonly used. Four different knives. You've seen how to use them. Go and check them out. Looks pretty good to me. Good night. God bless.